Assalamu alaikum. Hello, kids. How are you today? Are you ready for the next story? Insha'Allah, I am going to tell you the story of Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam today. Are you ready, children? Now listen carefully. After the death of his father, Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, Sulaiman alayhi salam inherited his prophethood and dominion. He begged Allah for a kingdom such as none after would have. And Allah granted his wish. Besides wisdom, Allah had blessed Sulaiman with many abilities. He could command the winds. He could understand and talk to birds and animals. One day, the Prophet gathered his army which had different battalions of men, jinns, birds, and animals. He marched them to the country of Ascalon. While passing through a valley, an ant saw the approaching army and cried out to warn those coming behind him, Run to your homes! Otherwise, unaware Sulaiman and his army might crush you! When the Prophet heard the cry of the ant, he smiled. He was glad that the ant knew him to be a prophet who would not intentionally harm Allah's creation. He thanked Allah for saving the ant's lives. Once the prophet called for a meeting with all the birds and animals, everyone arrived except for Hoopo Bird. The bird was nowhere to be found. In anger, he declared that unless the bird had good reason for its absence, he would punish it severely. The hoopoe eventually came to him and explained the reason for its delay. I have discovered something of which you are not aware, said the bird. I have come from Sheba with important news. The prophet's anger subsided and he became curious. Sheba is ruled by a queen named Bilqis. They have plenty of everything, including a splendid throne. But, in spite of all this wealth, Shaitan has entered her heart and the hearts of her people. She rules their minds completely. I was shocked to learn that they worship the sun instead of Allah the Almighty. To check the information, the Prophet sent a letter to the queen with the bird. He instructed the bird to remain hidden and watch everything. The hoopoe dropped the letter in front of the queen and flew away to hide. Bilqis excitedly opened the letter and read, Verily it is from Solomon, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Be you not exalted against me, but come to me as Muslims. The queen was very disturbed after reading the letter. She hurriedly summoned her advisors. When they read the letter, they felt the prophet was trying to threaten them. But the queen felt differently. She asked them to send their men with precious gifts for the prophet. She also wanted the men to find out about his military strength. When the men arrived in the land of the Prophet, they were surprised. They saw the well-equipped army, and the sights they saw around them made them realize that their wealth was nothing compared to the kingdom of Sulaiman alayhi salam. They were surprised at the number and variety of soldiers which included lions, tigers, and birds. The Prophet knew that the men were here on a probing mission. When the messengers presented their queen's precious gifts, they were shocked by the Prophet's reactions. He did not even ask to open the covers of containers. He told them, Allah has given me plenty of wealth, a large kingdom, and prophethood. I am therefore beyond bribery. My only objective is to spread the belief in Tawheed, the oneness of Allah. 
He also directed them to take back the gifts to the queen and tell her that if she did not stop her kind of worship, he would uproot her kingdom and drive its people out of the land. The queen's envoys returned the gifts to the queen and delivered the message. They also told her of the wonderful things they had seen. Instead of taking offense, she decided to visit the prophet herself. Accompanied by her royal officials and servants, she left Saba. She sent a messenger ahead to inform the prophet that she was on her way to meet him. When the prophet heard the news, he assembled the jinns who worked for him. He asked them if anyone among them could bring her throne to the palace before she arrived. One of them said, I will bring it to you before this sitting is over. The prophet did not react to this offer. It appeared that he was waiting for a faster means. The jinns competed with each other to please him. Then the last one said, I will fetch it for you in the twinkling of an eye. No sooner had this one finished his phrase that the throne magically stood before the prophet. The throne of Bilqis, which had been in Yemen some 2,000 miles away, now stood before him. When the queen arrived at the palace, she was welcomed with pomp and ceremony. Then, pointing to the throne, the prophet asked her whether her throne looked like that one. She looked at it again and again. In her mind, she was convinced her throne could not be possible to be the one she was looking at, as hers was in her palace in Yemen. Yet, detecting a striking similarity, she replied, It's as if it were the very one and resembles mine in every respect. The prophet, impressed by her intelligence and diplomatic skills, he invited her into the great hall, the floor of which was laid in glass and shimmering. Thinking it was water, she stepped on the floor. She lifted her skirt slightly above her heels, fear of wetting it. The prophet pointed out to her that it was made of solid glass. Bilqis was amazed. She had never seen such things before. She realized that she was in the company of a very knowledgeable person, who was not only a great ruler, but a messenger of Allah as well. She repented and gave up the worship of the sun. She went back to her kingdom and asked her people to do the same. The Prophet's death, like his life, was unique. One day, the Prophet was overseeing the jinns working at the mine. The Prophet was sitting on a chair, holding his staff. He died sitting in this position. For a long time, no one was aware of his death, for he was seen sitting erect. The jinns continued with their strife and toil, thinking that the Prophet was watching over them. Many days later, a hungry ant began nibbling at the Prophet's staff. It continued to do so, eating the lower part of the staff, until it fell out of the Prophet's hand. When his great body was no longer supported, it fell down. People hurried to him, and was then that they realized that he had died a long time ago. Did you like the video, kids? Please click the like button if you did. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and notification icon to keep updated on all our videos. Insha'Allah, I will tell you the story of Prophet Isaiah alayhi salam in the next video. That's all for today. Goodbye.